Hi. Hi, hello. So uh, what are you showing here? This is uh, a poster presentation of our brand new 300 millimeter and beyond step and repeat displacement Talbot lithography tool. And uh, is there an image about it? Yes, there is. So this is what the tool looks like. Uh, what's really exciting about this is this new step and repeat tool called the Fable X. Uh, contains all of the advantages of our other uh, DTL based systems, such as the low cost, high resolution, the large exposure fields, the large depth of focus, uh, and our very tight uh, mask lock design process. Uh, it takes all of that where our previous tools have done that as a single shot exposure, uh, which works great for four inch, eight inch, and even um, uh, six inch and eight inch wafers, but it doesn't work so great for 12 inch wafers. And so this is where our brand new tool comes in. This is um, a step and repeat tool. So it takes that uh, large exposure field and it can step and repeat it over larger substrates. So uh, 300 millimeter and beyond. So really a first of a kind, really exciting development for us at ULITHA. What, what does it enable? What can people do with this? That's a great question. So we specialize in um, the core of our technology being mass-based interference. Uh, because of that, there has to be a degree of periodicity to these to these um, highly reliable, high resolution structures. So if you look here on this slide, this is an, uh, some examples of the types of nanostructures that we're able to pattern with these tools. It's excellent at 1D, 2D structures uh, over very large areas. Here's an example of a pixel cell. Um, we also have here a optical element. This is a lens that is several inches across. Uh, it has millimeters of curvature and we're able to pattern over top of that really easily with our large depth of focus. So uh, what's the role mm -hmm. your, your company is doing right now in the display industry? And you had a booth here, right? What That's you were, right. What you were talking about there? Yeah, so our role here is um, looking for uh, alternative lithography that's lower cost, more reliable than some of the other options on the market right now. Uh, for example, uh, with Nano Imprint, you struggle a lot with um, defectivity, yield issues, cost issues, masters are expensive. It's difficult to scale to panel size um, with a lot of, of the strategies, uh, where ours does very well with that. You, can, you have that cost savings, um, scale with the with the large substrates. So that's uh, one of our main reasons for being here at Display Week. All right. Yeah, just uh, what, what other question I didn't ask about this? What, what more can you say? How far is it into the future to, to actually launch this product? Is it just like a rendering or is it oh, actually happening? Oh, that's a happening? great question. So we have actually made and sold this. So this is a, a um, digital image, right? But this tool has been made. Uh, and and is out in the field. So it's t Talbot lithography. Is this the same thing as like the Fourier optics Talbot imaging, where it's a repeating pattern? Is that why you're calling it that? Yes. So it's based on the Talbot effect, as we would call it, which is when um, collimated light passes through at some incident angle of a periodic mask, you generate an interference pattern, a 3D aerial image for the lithography. And so that's the effect that we take advantage for to have really highly reliable, um, really high contrast periodic structures. So through that 3D aerial image or that 3D uh, interference pattern, our substrate with photoresist actually displaces through that, that image of high, low intensity photons, and that's where the pattern transfer occurs. So the first part of it, Talbot, is that effect that you're talking about. And the second part, displacement, is the longitudinal mo motion of our substrates through that interference pattern. Okay. Um, so you have a mask. I, I guess that's in inducing this. Um, I, I guess there's no limit to how big this can be in the sense of like you have a collimated light source it, your mask can be very, very large, right? I'm guessing. Or so, is that not the yes case? and no. So, so inherently, our technology is not limited by the mask. However, uh, we utilize semiconductor industry standard high resolution masks. So, if you're used to working with like a Topon or a Fertronics of the industry, we use their masks. And so, we've built tools around industry standard masks for our customers. So, you don't have like an, a two meter mask or a, a 
five meter mass. That's right. That's there. right. Um, but if but if the that physics was, doesn't limit but the physics would yeah, yeah doesn't limit that. Issue, right? If if that was easy to come by, we could it could be integrated. I'm just thinking of in terms of like a display. Mm -hmm. Like they have these huge mother glasses, and if you wanted to do that instead of um, the evaporation thin metal uh, TMM fabrication, you wanted to do all lithography, you'd want a huge. Yes, because then you wouldn't have any seams. Yeah. So, but you'd have to build a new machine, and you'd need you need to build a mask. I guess would be the tricky thing. The or, mask is the tricky part. Or yes. I guess, can you take the masks and stick them together? Can you take ten masks? You would still have uh, stitching. You'd still have boundaries, and so in that case, it's easier just to step and repeat the mask uh, using stage accuracy. You know, like cave filtering at the stitching, if you could get that to be high, probably not. No. Probably multiple frequencies. Okay.